Roll call call for the City Council meeting of June 1st, 2016 at 9 a.m. Mr. Mursky, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kutowski, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon. Please rise for a moment of some meditation and Pledge of Allegiance. Um, again, this morning we ask that we remember all of those in our community that are least fortunate or less fortunate than we are and all of those who have lost loved ones since the last time we were in these chambers. And we ask our God and Creator to give us the wisdom and the proper information to make the best decisions for the citizens of the city of Erie. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of minutes from the City Council meeting of May 18th, 2016, and bills for payment on April 27th and June 3rd, 2016. Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Mursky. Do we have any requests for repository sales? Any requests for repository sales? Seeing none, we'll continue on. Citizens to be heard, Mr. Randy Barnes. You just said something. I didn't hear what it was. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Morning, Council President, Council Administration guests. My name is Randy Barnes, 109 Walton Point, Erie, Pennsylvania. And I think you probably have seen it, and I see it. It seems like almost daily we're in the media we're seeing about groups of people getting together and talking and trying to chart a route to help their small part of the city and, and, and uh, improve, and, and which will make the, the, all the parts stronger. And I think that's an encouraging thing, and I hope that council can kind of help lead us and, and take some strong direction. I think one of these things... Uh, well, before I talk about that, he said we're coming up on a two-year anniversary. The two-year anniversary is when uh, three sitting council people voted to give Mr. Clem a thousand dollars a month for 24 months, and those three city council people were Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, and Mr. Jones. And in these two years, uh, initially it was to help the incoming clerk get up to speed and uh, archive some records. And of course, we know the records were archived. Uh, last year. But I have to think, how would I feel if I was an, a, a person that applied for a job, interviewed for the job, was picked to be the best candidate over other candidates, but yet in two years, yet to hear anybody on council at the end of the meeting say that this person has now been trained and we won't need Mr. Clem again. Now until we hear that, uh, the supposition is that uh, we still need Mr. Clem for $1,000 a month. I encourage council to resist the, the, uh, the urge to continue to give their friend $1,000 a month because I think that uh, the current clerk was trained the day she stepped on the job two years ago. And she did the job before that, and she's done a fine job. So this, this thing of uh, giving our friends and family extra bonuses when they retire or extra whatever has got to stop. I think council has to open their eyes and, and think more and look at the big picture and think more of this regionalism. Right now you have city residents paying taxes who goes to the, it goes to the busing. You have city residents that pay county taxes and it goes toward the busing. So they're paying twice. Here you have the county that says, I want to take over this and relieve the bur that double burden on the city taxpayers. But yet we have a council that says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're losing some of our power. You have no power. Drive around the city. Do you think you've done a good job? Do you think city council and the administration have done a good job for the past 20 years in the city? So what's wrong with change? Are you so resistant to change that you have to hire Mr. Clem for 24 months because we're having a new clerk? Or because the city or the county wants to fund all the busing? You're so resistant to change? Well, guess what? If you don't change, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to be down here two years from now talking about the same problems. This narrow-sighted vision this county, this city council has along with the administration that well, we can't give up that bus. 
We'll have no representation. They're going to take the bus away from the inner city. Move on. I like, I like the businessman has the signs on uh, on uh, 12th Street. How like two councils are fighting over over what? What are we fighting over? Is it an ego thing? Are our egos that big that we can't set them aside when we come in and be sworn in to put, uh, do what rights for the citizens of Erie? I hear all the time about how we we do everything in the city, and these county residents take advantage of it and don't contribute. We're here you having a, a, a chamber just across the square trying to help the county residents contribute more to that asset that happens to be located within the city. So I think there's got a lot of, a lot of things that have to change and I hope that at some point, if not today, but in the near future, one of those three city councilmen that voted to give Mr. Clem $1,000 a month for 24 months will step forward and do the right thing and, and acknowledge that uh, the current city clerk has done a fine job and is very well trained. And, and, and maybe thank Mr. Clem for all the advice and all that help he's given council and the current clerk for the last two years. Because I think that would be a fitting end to this saga that's lasted way too long. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. Our next citizen to be heard, uh, Julie Minnick. <coughs> Good morning. My name is Julie Minnick. Um, I live at 1027 West 37th Street, zip code 16508. And I'm here representing all of Ward Erie, which represents a large portion of bus riders. I'm asking you once again to negotiate the EM charter. The clock is ticking. But what you don't realize is that this can be a win-win for both of you. We live in a community. We have to work together. And people are watching. PennDOT is watching, and perhaps investors are watching. I know that these two councils will have to work in the future. So it would be beneficial if you could work together now. Both councils can benefit. Both councils can win. You have to look at this as a chance to grow. A chance to help each other out. Think of it as an opportunity. I know that there is going to be a proposal from county council submitted to you. They have some good suggestions and some good points. For instance, they want the charter to last 20 years. That's one generation. With the rapid progress of technology, a lot could happen in 20 years. Buses could be automated in 20 years. It's already happening in Pittsburgh. Fixed routes could be a thing of the past. I know it's been a point of contention, but again, look at this as an opportunity to work together. Secondly, I know that there's a ridership committee already. I should know. I'm on it. What county council wants to do is actually put it in the charter. That way it always exists. Right now the ridership committee is voluntary um, at EMTA's discretion but they want to make it mandatory. A ridership advisory committee is a good idea. In fact, it's a necessary thing. It should be written into the charter. Another major point of disagreement is board expansion. I've heard a lot about that. <laughs> but it also should be looked at as a futuristic move. In the future, Major businesses, major industries could be in the county. In fact, 
Most people who've talked to me personally have suggested board expansion. The clock is ticking. The time to negotiate is now. The formal deadline for the charter is September 15th, but County Council is actually pushing for a deadline of June 30th. Now this whole charter issue reminds me of an old story, and I hope you'll indulge me. I love stories. It's an old story between of an ant and a dove. An ant's drinking along the river, and all of a sudden a current comes and sweeps them away. There's a dove in the tree above, and she sees this. She snaps off a leaf, and it falls gently to, into the water. The ant grabs onto the leaf and goes to shore. While the ant is riding down the river, the ant notices that there's a bird catcher with a giant net, and he knows that that bird catcher wants to capture the dove. He has a plan. When he gets to shore, he bites the bird catcher, and the bird catcher screams, which scares the dove, which makes her fly away to safety. Two lives saved. The reason I bring this story up is because you never know when you're going to need each other. This is a whole community. We all work together. And I'm asking you to be receptive to all of Ordiri possibly mediating a meeting between city and county council. I have um, business cards, if you wouldn't mind passing these out. Because I am going to be emailing you, so I just want you to be aware. <laughs> Any other citizens to be heard? Any other citizens to be heard? Thank you so much. Really thank you. Seeing none, um, we'll continue on with the Ordinances for final passage. Council file 15953, official ordinance number 152016. An ordinance closing and vacating an alley which is described as a 10 foot by 90 foot parcel of land that abuts the following parcels. 316 West 16th Street, 317 West 16th Street, and 1613 Hickory Street uh, with reservation of existing utility rights of way. By Mr. Brennan and seconded by Mr. Witherspoon, the Council File Ordinance Bill Number 15953 and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 15 2016 be finally passed by the City Council. Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Mursky. City Council passed Official File <coughs> Ordinance Number 15 2016 finally by A7, nay 0. New business. Mr. President, I'd like to move the balance of the agenda. I'll second. Any separation? I'd like to separate one under new businesses for clarification of my comments. Moving the balance of the agenda, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Marski. By Mr. Jones, seconded by Mr. Kotowski, that the proposed repository sale of properly common, commonly known as 432 East 17th Street by the Erie County Tax Claim Bureau to Bren Brenton Davis, 8370 Wattsburg Road, Erie, PA, in the amount of 250 be hereby approved. Okay, I separate this because um, I received some phone calls while I was gone this week and uh, just had the opportunity this morning to actually look at it. And uh, I talked to Ms. Green about my concerns, and I, I kind of feel a little bit better about it. 
But I want to go on notice as saying that uh, these repository cells that come before us, I'm not going to be so eager to okay all of them until I start realizing what they want to do with them because when you looked at this one property, I can understand the neighbor's worries when they look across the street. And uh, I didn't realize when the gentleman bought the property, and I think he's in the process of cleaning it. But having old vehicles that are rusty situation with uh, tires flattened, that's not acceptable any longer. Uh, if we read the Buki report, and we like to cite that when it comes to our benefit, then we're going to have to live by those comments. And I think neighbors have a right to expect that when we give these repository sales out to people, that they're not out of town wheeler dealers that are using them for equity sales and little more, and they end up being the same problem we had before. So I'm going to start looking at them with a little bit more, and I don't care. I don't care what the legal department says. I'll vote no on these things if I don't feel that they're proper any longer. So on this one, I think Ms. Green has convinced me that I think I'm willing to give this gentleman a chance. Uh, and uh, so I'll, I will be casting a yes vote today. Mr. President, just um, in agreement uh, with what Mr. Kortowski has said, and that's why the last, well, maybe five, six years ago, um, we, that's why we have individuals who are requesting repository sales come before this council, and they have to give their identification. They have, if they are out of city, out of state, they have to have a local representative that we have access to as a city uh, so that, you know, those concerns can be handled and, uh, you know, people don't disappear. Um, you know, out of sight and out of mind. So, so your your concerns, I think, are shared with all of us in the city and council. And um, there are some things in place we haven't had to that I know of had to enact a lot of you know going after folks and finding that we haven't had as many problems since people have to come before this body. There was a time when this, these were just on the agenda, and it was just kind of push, push, pushed unless there was some glaring issue uh, from the administration. But now it's <clears throat> it is a much more um, interactive. We see a face to a name. <clears throat> we have identification and, and, and contact information as well. So um, so I just wanted to just kind of give some clarity to that, and, and you're right on it. Thank you. All right, roll call. Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kutowski, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Mursky. That'll take us to committee reports, Mr. President. Committee reports, Mrs. Arrington. Hi, um, I had the pleasure last week to um, go into Memphis, Tennessee to a NUSA conference on communities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it was an awesome conference. Over a thousand people from all over the world were there. They were talking about um, community policing, neighborhoods, violence. We broke out into workshops for three days. I learned a lot and I'm going to be bringing some of the stuff that I heard and learned down there to the table and see if we can implement up here in the city of Erie. Because I think if it's working in these other cities that's bigger than ours, it will work in ours. So that was a a, a nice trip that I took and I, and I look forward to the one next year. They have one every year and actually one of our leaders in the community, Paul Gamble was just, just voted to the board. Uh, so he's on a NUSA conference so maybe one day we can bring this conference to Erie. You know, it would really do our economy really well. It probably was about maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people there. The hotels made out good, the places to eat, and it was an awesome conference, and I really enjoyed myself. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. No report this morning. Uh, I don't have really have a report, but I just wanted to tell uh, Ms. Minnick out there that uh, – when you talk about the uh, appointment of a ridership committee, those are easy things to solve, but just so you know, that was never mentioned and never was a concern to them at the meeting that we had with them. Because uh, that's, that's an easy issue. That's, that's not even negotiable. It should be just, you know, talk and that's it and it's over. And uh, with that, I have no report. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, a couple items I want to report on. Um, 
I attended the uh, Eastside uh, Multicultural Community event. It was called Celebrate EMC. It was on uh, May 21st. Uh, great attendance. About 250 people attended. Um, the event, uh, a lot of the um, uh, funding was by Sister St. Joseph. They sponsored it, but a lot of other agencies uh, were involved in the, in the, in the, uh, in the day. Uh, but it was a true collaboration. A lot of, a lot of groups were, were in attendance. Uh, part of the event was a cleanup effort for the neighborhood. Um, they had a lunch, a band, and there were um, uh, news and education on neighborhood initiatives that are going on right now. So uh, definitely thank you to the Sister St. Joseph for, for that event. Uh, also attend the Port Authority board meeting on the 24th. Uh, the amphitheater roof structure bid was awarded to E. Austin. Uh, so that work will be done at the end of, I believe, at the end of summer, not the beginning, because they have a temporary structure for the, um, for the concerts that are coming up. Uh, Port Authority continues to work on strategic planning. Um, they announced their 8th grade Tuesdays concerts that are uh, going to be starting soon. I, I guess it's soon. I'm not sure the first date on, offhand. Um, and also, they, they changed the public meetings. Their public meetings are, were on Tuesdays. Now they're on Thursdays. So that's a change. If you're looking to go to a meeting, make sure and uh, look at the um, uh, date. I think they publish that in the, in the uh, newspaper, the update. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to report on the um, I attended the Robbins Blast Neighborhood Watch meeting uh, this past week. Uh, Sarah Galloway from the city by and both attended. They had a lot of questions on uh, uh, tree trimming and different things they want to do with Pebble Park and throughout their neighborhood. Uh, one of the things they want to do is look seek for seek funding for a gazebo. Uh, that's part of a, a plan that they they want to. Um, install in the, with the next year or two. Uh, and I know uh, Sarah had given them uh, uh, some input on uh, how, how to go about uh, building that structure and uh, possible resources for funding. But uh, the organization is doing a lot of great things in the neighborhood. And there are a lot of people who are in, involved. And it was, a, it was a very good meeting. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, the Erie Housing Authority <coughs> Uh, is continuing their uh, plans to uh, seek a new executive director. Currently, Mr. Dan Rossner uh, is the acting executive director, and Mr. Mike Fraley, the assistant uh, director. They are doing a fantastic job. They're keeping the legacy of Mr. Haran alive. They, both of them, are very concerned about. Uh, residents of public housing, and the only thing that has changed uh, at the Housing Authority is the uh, presence of uh, Mr. Haran. So he did an outstanding job in preparing these two individuals to continue. Um, the search committee uh, is has been organized, and they will be seeking uh, or having an interview and seeking the uh, replacement of Mr. Rand. Uh, the plans are not final yet, but they are uh, moving right along. Uh, the second uh, thing I'd like to say that uh, this is the 26th year of the Summer Basketball League and let everyone know that it's called Spoons League and the Spoons League is my part of my last name and it's simply a tag. We could have called it hoop de doo League. It don't matter. But the point is we have close to 300. And my goal is 300 youths participating five days a week, five hours a day. And that means they are not in trouble. They're not doing something that would cause them to uh, be dealing with the uh, law enforcement. They are there. And... I understand that there's some concerns about uh, the league, but I say to those who have some negative feelings for some reason, volunteer and you'll see what we do there. Uh, it's very disappointing uh, for folks to, in this day and age, to downgrade a program that's been there for 26 years. Now, if you don't like Melvin Witherspoon, then you deal with Melvin Witherspoon personally. And, and I guarantee you it will be resolved, or oh, maybe in the first five minutes of the conversation. Um, but the uh, website, sign up uh, website is open. 
uh, www.spoonsleague.org, and you uh, sign up. We ask the parents to sign them up. Uh, therefore, they open their own account, and you can see where your son's at when he plays, or the daughter, either one. And also, we have a bitty basketball camp, which is uh, basically a city recreation league. That begins the last Monday in June. Uh, five, six, seven, eight-year-olds. It's a camp for two hours a day, five days a week. Uh, lunch is provided by uh, Sherry McKinnon from the YMCA. Uh, again, that's another city recreation program. So those two that I just mentioned is basically a city program, a city recreation program. They support us for the last 25 years, and the kids they support are their kids. It's not only city kids, it's also kids that come from the county. Last year, last five years, we allowed uh, uh, kids that travel from Union City to play in our league because we got the best league. And it's not uh, the PIAA type league. You're going to get knocked around, you're going to get bang. And parents bring their kids up there to learn from other kids, from the kids that live in the hood. And I guarantee you, they, they tell me, it's not a camp, but they learn a lot from the individuals. But what they really do is they bond and find out that all the kids that live in the hood are not bad. There's a lot of friends. And one particular, and I always use them as an example, Charlie Lichtenwalter came in. Um, he lived in the city, but he came in very timid. Played three years, he established himself. He made friends. Charlie can go in the hood right now, today, and they know him and he will not be harmed. That's what I do. I'm a climate changer. That's what I do. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, once again, just following up with Mel with the Summer Jobs Parks and Recreation Program. Uh, it's going to take parents and grandparents to get your kids signed up. Uh, take advantage of this. I, between the city and the sponsors, there's three quarters of a million, about, about $750,000 that is put towards this program yearly. And uh, it's not just basketball or uh, tennis. It's not just sports. There's a lot of different uh, theater, I believe, and arts. I mean, there's a lot of things for these kids to do during the day that they get, and as well as get fed So, if some of the parents are working. So there is things for our youth to do during the summer that the city does provide. And there's one thing that's definitely, definitely an asset that we can do for our kids. It's this summer rec program. Naturally, with the MTA, I did attend the recent, most recent meeting with the uh, board. Uh, Julie, I want to thank her for her comments here today. What we've been, since our first meeting that we did with the county, our initial meeting we met with county council, since then we've probably more or less have had the deputy secretary be like the mediator. I mean, they would say what they want, which they're really, they're, and I hate to use the term demands, but that's almost what it is. They want the takeover. We understand that. Uh, but we were trying to negotiate through Toby Farver, and we did suggest even in the, within the last week that even if we shorten that charter to 20 years, because it's we got something that is still working, growing. It is real regionalized. It's not broken. So maybe in 20 years, it will be broken, or maybe something will need to be adjusted. Maybe in 10 years something will need to be done, maybe in five. But right now, change is not needed at the EMTA. It does work. So naturally, uh, 
council hasn't discussed it since the last uh, response from the county on this, and we will, and we'll go from there. But uh, with that being said, we're not done with this. We're going to work together as our council and work with county council as we see fit. Thank you. Good morning. I just want to um, let it remind everyone and thank all of our council people for having their summer rec guides in front of them. Um, every, all the information is available on the city's website. Um, the guides have gone home with school children. They were delivered in the Erie Times News. 
um, lots of summer programs to get your kids involved with Spoons. I don't want to repeat what everyone has said, but Spoons Basketball League, um, the Biddy Camp, Footlights Theater, lots and lots of good programs to keep our kids active and um, busy this summer. That doesn't even touch on all of the um, activities that the Housing Authority offers for um, for their residents. So um, keep in mind that time is of the essence, and we need to get those kids registered so we can keep them busy this summer. Um, summer music series. The Sounds of Summer music series starts on um, Mondays, um, June 6th. The first one is going to be at the Curry Shell Apartments. Um, we are having a summer concert at the Perry Square Pavilion. That will take place on Monday, June 13th, and all of those concerts start at 7 p.m. So we hope to get some people downtown, um, especially to break in the new pavilion. Have a great day. Thank you, Ms. Beck. Ms. President, you, I, I yeah. saw you were... <laughs> Just, just want to uh, uh, let let the citizens know that uh, there is a Memorial Day tradition uh, that I didn't attend, but uh, I received so many phone calls and pictures on Facebook. Uh, the basketball court, uh, which is called Spoons Court, but again, uh, it's Penelope property, but they handed over to the city years ago to have a recreational outdoor facility in that area of the city. And the tradition uh, is a Memorial Day where young men get together. And I was told that there was between 80 and 90 young men at the court playing. And I was also told that out of that 80 to 90 individuals, 95% played in the league. So we are doing something there to the folks that question that. And uh, out of that 85, 90, uh, I guess about nine of them was in the Jones family. (laughs) And we were all there Monday morning. (laughs) Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Witherspoon. With that, um, this meeting is adjourned. City Council adjourns at 9.42. Mr. Mursky, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Mr. Narski, Mr. Witherspoon.